We're trying to salvage our Constitution and salvage our liberties. Obviously, too often our foreign policy of the last 30 or 40 years has backfired on us. We get involved, we spend a lot of money, lose a lot of lives, and there, there are no victories. And uh, then the, the financial consequences are severe. There's been a $4 trillion increase in our national debt due to the wars we're fight, fighting in the Middle East. Nobody gave authority, proper authority to go there. Nobody knows exactly why we're there. Nobody knows when it's going to be over. They claim it's over in Iraq. I think it's only beginning, unfortunately. And it's just more turmoil. And the sooner we understand that not minding our own business is a much better way to get along with people than dropping bombs on them. But, you know, another important point in our platform is that of personal liberties. And I am convinced that if you understand personal liberty, if you understand individual liberty, if you understand where liberty comes from, it comes to us in a natural way. It comes to us in a God-given way. If you understand that, you know that you should also have the right to keep the fruits of all your labors. But it is, this, it is this careless attitude about individual liberty that has really been undermining, wh whether it's our foreign policy or our economic policy. We, uh, as a country, 100 years ago or so, for some reason, we, we chopped freedom into pieces. And some people defended personal liberties a little bit better than others. Others defended economic liberty. But if you understand individual liberty, personal liberty and economic liberty are one in the same. <laughs> When people, when people are frightened, sometimes they overdo things. And I think a lot of that happened after 9-11. By not understanding the, the full impact and what was going on after 9-11, uh, tragically, it was used as an opportunity for those who had a bill floating around for a decade. And uh, they saw this as an opportunity. And it was a bill that was, ha it was misnamed, obviously. It was called the Patriot Act. It should have never been passed and it ought to be repealed. It was, it was obviously well intended, but taking away our freedoms is not a, a good result of what they were trying to do. Franklin warned us about uh, giving up liberty for security. And I have come to the firm conviction that we as Americans should never give up any liberty on the pretense that we're going to have more security. I'm convinced if the Patriot Act had been named something like repeal the Fourth Amendment, it might have had more trouble getting passed. But I was sitting beside another congressman when we were passing that bill, and uh, we only had an hour or two to look at that final version. And he was voting for it, and guess what? I was voting against it. And, uh, and I said to him, why are you voting for this? I said, have you read it? No. I said, there's a lot of bad stuff in here. He says, I know. I said, well, why are you voting for it? He says, well, how can I go back to my district? After 9-11, the people want us to do something. I can't go back and explain it to them. I said, but that is your job to go back home and explain it to them. But the Patriot Act is going, if it's not changed or repealed, uh, it's going to be a real burden to us because it's a real attack on our privacy. And now they're planning more. They're, they're planning uh, the uh, whole idea of controlling the Internet. They're, they're saying they're going to control piracy uh, on the Internet. But what they're going to do is control your freedom your, and your privacy. We have the government turned upside down. The government becomes more secretive at the same time your privacy is being undermined. The Constitution was meant to protect your liberties, your privacy, and the government was to be open. A 
Approximately a year ago, a member of the uh, uh, Obama administration came to a Senate committee and announced that policies had been changed. He said now that they are changing this, uh, and it's up front. They were putting it out on the table. That's what really scares me. They've abused the law in the past, but they knew it was wrong, and they hit it. Today, it's too much up front. He said, we are now having an established policy that we, can ter uh, that we can assassinate American citizens. That bad, that is bad news. So they practiced it. They did it for, on three times, and uh, they've established this as a precedent. So that is a dictatorship when one or two people in the whole United States can dictate and decide he's a bad guy, he needs assassinated because we can't try him. Never, char no charges, nothing official. So it is, the, it is especially important that you try the bad guys because if you don't try the bad guys, it really undermines our, our liberties. We, we have done this. Just think after, uh, after World War II, the uh, Nazi criminals were tried at Nuremberg. Uh, even Adolf Eichmann, I find when he was captured, he was tried, given, given a trial and then properly executed by the Israelis. So why, is, why are we getting so afraid of capturing people and arresting them and giving them a proper rights? But no, they've gone one step further. Here, two weeks ago, they passed this very, very ornery National Defense Authorization Act. <laughs> And I'm always very pleased and I comment on it because the people who come to our rallies and know about what we stand for knows what's in that bill and unfortunately the rest of the country better find out what is in that bill. Yeah. But that bill essentially says that any American citizen now can be arrested not by their local police, not by the FBI, not by some other group, but by the military. This is military law. The military can come in and arrest an American citizen and put in prison indefinitely and denied a lawyer. That has to be reversed or we cannot have a republic anymore. So that should be our goal. But Personal, really all we have to do is think about liberty, where it comes from, defend liberty. You will defend the marketplace. You will defend private property. You will defend sound money. You will defend contracts. And you will have the regulations of free markets. Under those conditions, guess what? The rich don't get bailed out, and the, pe and the people don't get their bad debts dumped on them. You have to live up to the contract and the, and the bankruptcy. So this is, this is the important thing. We have to see the free market, individual liberty, a sound economic, a sound foreign policy. And we have a tremendous opportunity. We are having a tremendous impact. Iowa is a great victory as far as I'm concerned, and I believe that the momentum will continue. I believe this country is ripe. They're frustrated with the leadership of both parties. They never see anything change, but they know darn well that I will stick to my guns if put in that office and protect the Constitution and liberty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.